Um, as you may know, manual palpation is still widely performed in the OR, mainly by surgeons. And this is a photography of a hepatobiliary surgeon who uh, is uh, exploring uh, a liver tumor. And why that? Because it gives information on tissue characteristic. And what we want to do as radiologists is to give this information, but non-invasively. So as you know, there are different approaches. The first one uh, was the transient elastography, and we have here the inventor of the uh, transient elastography. But more recently, uh, the, um, uh, it has been integrated onto a conventional ultrasound, and the shear wave elastography has uh, the advantages to be uh, to give a two-dimensional real-time method. So I won't go back on the principle because you know that very well. But I think the uh, the advantage of uh, a shear wave elastography is to give the uh, either the, uh, the, the 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 measurement in uh, in uh, meter per second or in, uh, in uh, kilopascal, and also to give a color-coded map, which is very helpful. You can move everyone in the organ, and within the color map, you can record several times and get the measurement. So we will see together the main indications of uh, tissue elastography in the liver. The very first indication is fibrosis, and then we will talk a little bit about portal hypertension and why it is useful to assess the portal hypertension non-invasively. And I will very rapidly touch uh, the, what about the, the focal liver lesions. So why, from a clinical point of view, it is important to assess the, the level of fibrosis? You know, as Jacques Souquet told you, that hep, hepatitis B and C are worldwide problems. And patient management is still dependent on the degree of fibrosis between treat or no treat. So again, if we can get this information non-invasively, avoiding a liver biopsy, this could be very, very useful for the patient. The other aspect is that the liver regeneration decreases with the severity of fibrosis. And consequently, in patients with, with hepatocellular carcinoma, surgical resection, depends on the degree of fibrosis. So all these reasons um, to explain that it is important to evaluate non-invasively fibrosis. How we can do today? Indeed, there are other means, and especially the serum markers by combining several serum markers. But tissue elasticity is another approach which is very good. So now we, we have data regarding the shear waves elastography in patients with hepatitis B and C. Strong and reliable data in the subject in studies including more than 100 or 200 patients. And what do we know if we go in detail into, this, uh, into these studies? First, these studies which has compared the shear waves elastography with the transient elastography. What we can see here is that the sensitivity and the specificity are much higher using shear waves elastography, and especially in the setting of mild fibrosis, which is a key question. The other thing which is interesting is the consistency of the data. Here, I show you two studies. A large one in hepatitis C, another one larger even in hepatitis B. If we look at the different cutoff value, things are very consistent, whatever the cause of the underlying liver disease. If you take the F2, you have EC, the cutoff value of 7.1. And in both studies, the cutoffs have shown very high value of areas under the curves. But this is not enough if we want really to spread out the techniques. What do we need? We need to show that these data are reproducible. And this has been shown by several studies. Indeed, as usual, if you perform the same exam on the same day by the same observer, data are good. This, this is shown. But very good results also when performing at different days or between operators. 
Indeed, these techniques may have some limitations, and the best results have been obtained in the right liver, conversely to the left liver, and in expert uh, between uh, better than junior. What we want to see more, the applicability, because we want to spread out the technique. And this is the largest study I have found, more than 400 patients. All these patients had Shearwell's elastography, fibro scan, and fibro test. There was no method of reference be, be, because the key question was, are these techniques applicable or not at large scale? And the answer is yes. TE and Shearwell elastography had an applicability of 90% of the cases, which is really great. Indeed, it's a little lower than fibro test because fibro tests are blood samples. So for fibro test, we even should get 100%. I still don't understand why in this, in this paper they did not get 100%. However, this is a very good result. What is important as well is that Shearwell elastography performs better in patients with ascites. And in clinical practice, we know that because we, we evaluate patients every day. And here are two examples. Two patients with chronic liver disease. On the left, a patient without ascites. On the right, a patient with ascites. And you can see that we can record the tissue elasticity even in patients with ascites. Another question is, the liver is complex, even sometimes more complex than the brain, because there is not one phenomenon, but things are intermingled. We don't have a pure model of fibrosis. Patients with develop fibrosis also may have inflammation, may have iron overload, may have steatosis, and so and so. It is important to see exactly the weight of the different parameters in and especially in the tissue elasticity. So these are preliminary data from our lab. In, our, in this, this patient, we performed liver biopsy and we very carefully analyzed the level of fibrosis, the presence of inflammation, steatosis, and so and so. At univariate analysis, Stiffness was related to all the other parameters, fibrosis, inflammation, statuses, so very complex. But if we go to another level, and if we look at the data at a multivariate analysis, then here, the only parameter which was related to the liver stiffness was fibrosis. So it is really a very important biomarker to assess liver fibrosis. My second topic is portal hypertension. Portal hypertension, you know that it is a complication of cirrhosis. And the, in most of the patients, the degree of portal hypertension explains the importance of the complications. Complications which are esophageal varices, ascites, and so on. So complications will, that will hamper the patient's prognosis. And therefore, the liver cirrhosis can be stratified according to the portal hypertension. Before, we used to consider cirrhosis as a whole entity. Okay, one patient has a cirrhosis. But no, this is not true because there are many different stages in cirrhosis. Indeed, some patients have compensated cirrhosis while others have decompensated cirrhosis. But here you don't see only two stages, you see three stages. And the complications are really related to the different stages. And what is the important parameter? The severity of the portal hypertension, which is usually obtained only invasively. Another aspect is that major liver resection is contraindicated in portal with portal hypertension. So it is really crucial to obtain this parameter, and if possible, non-invasively. How can we do so? Imaging, ultrasound, contrast ultrasound, CTMR, is good to say there is portal hypertension or there is no portal hypertension. But it is poor to assess the level of portal hypertension. So the question is, does liver stiffness and or perhaps spleen stiffness can assess the severity of portal hypertension? 
And there has been some work published very recently using different methods. One of the very first one used the FibroScan, 100 patients. They have shown that, yes, if you look at the liver stiffness, but also at the spleen stiffness, you've got significant differences according to the presence of a low gradient or a high gradient, which is the, the hemodynamic parameter of portal hypertension. And from a more clinical point of view, if you look now at presence or not of zephagal varices, which is really important for these patients, yes, again, you can stratify patients according to the spleen stiffness or the liver stiffness you can rule in or rule out. This was one of the very first papers. Some others, using other techniques, ARFI, have also demonstrated that spleen stiffness could be interesting to differentiate patients with no esophageal varices, patients with esophageal varices but at low risk of bleeding, and the patients at high risk of bleeding. But as you can see here, differences are significant, but there is a huge overlap. We don't have much experience or much data, data with the shear wave elastography. But in our lab, we did a study in patients awaiting liver transplantation. These patients were very severe. They all had portal hypertension at a high degree. So our window was not as broad as the window described in the, in the other papers. Anyhow, we were able to show the correlation, a positive correlation between the gradient, so the hemodynamic gradient, portohepatic gradient, and the liver stiffness. We did not observe a correlation with the spleen. One of the reasons could be that our patients were so severe, they all had marked hypertension, so probably this explain. So we had a positive correlation between the gradient and the liver stiffness. But what was also very interesting, if we look at our data and the coefficient of variation, because we did, we repeat the exam, and there were two observers. When we had a small coefficient of, of variation, I mean very reliable data between two observers, then the correlation was much higher. So this could be maybe used as a criterion for, for exam quality. And next, very short, what about liver tumors? This is beyond the, the, the topic I, I should cover, but I think it is very interesting. Of, indeed, with the liver, we focused on, on diffuse liver disease, but many, many patients have liver tumors. Is there a role for measure, measuring tissue elasticity? There is this paper, very interesting, coming from a French group from Lyon, and uh, but here we face a more difficult challenge. We don't deal anymore with the diffuse liver disease. Why is it more difficult? Because some tumors might be deep. Because some others might be in a subcapsular area. Because some others might be located in the left lobe. And we know that it's much more difficult to record the tissue elasticity in the left lobe. So there are keys we should really optimize for, for tumor assessments, which are based on training, on patient compliance, and indeed to repeat measures. Our experience in a subgroup of patients, patients with incidental liver lesions. Why did we focus on that? Because in those patients, we want to go straight to the diagnosis. We want to be less invasive as possible, and we want to have a 100% correct diagnosis, okay? And these patients have no chronic liver disease, these patients don't have any primary cancer, these patients are very likely to have benign tumors, but some of them will have malignant. And this first figure to show you that we had a uh, a number of patients and 115 focal liver lesions, but we were not able to record measurement in 100% of the lesion. In roughly 10%, we did not get data because we had patient motion, deep lesion, and major steatosis. I mean, here, the feasibility was not 100%, but was roughly 90%. We 
which is not bad. What are uh, the results? If we look at the, um, the role of tissue elasticity in distinguishing malignant from benign lesion, this is a very controversial topic. If we look at the literature, most of articles have been using RFE. Some of them said, oh, that's great, because we observed higher values in malignant lesions. And the other articles said, no, there is no difference. How can we explain such discrepancy? Because there has been many bias in patient population. I just take the example of one paper. They have only compared liver metastasis, which are known to be very hard lesion, okay, like rocks, <laughs> and on the other hand, very soft lesions, the liver hemangioma. So it's not fair to do so. You have to have the whole spectrum of the liver tumors. Um, so I think this aspect for the moment should not be used in the clinical practice. But we did differently. We focused on the incidental liver lesions, I as explained. And we found very interesting results. We found that we could differentiate some very hard lesion, the focal nodular hyperplasia, indeed from the very soft lesion, the hemangioma, but in between, in between the hepatocellular adenoma, and we were also able to differentiate the different subtypes, subtypes of the hepatocellular adenoma. And all these differences were statistically significant. I want to show you an example. This is a soft lesion, you can see here, 10 kilopascal. And on the right, contrast and hand ultrasound will show you a typical liver hemangioma. Okay. On the other hand, this is another example. This is a very hard lesion, 45 kilopascal, as you can see here. And below you will see the MR imaging, which is typical of focal nodular hyperplasia. So even in benign lesion, you can get the whole spectrum. But if you combine this information with other imaging findings, then you have an added value. And in doubtful cases, you don't require the liver biopsy to make a specific diagnosis. So we strongly rely on that. So if I want to summarize, what could be today the advantages of Sherway's elastography? Indeed, it's all in one examination. You can perform the ultrasound examination, you complete with the contrast and hands. If you want, you can make the liver biopsy and you can measure the tissue elastography. Previous report, very reliable data, show that it's highly accurate to stage fibrosis and especially early stage of fibrosis in Hep B and Hep C. It is highly applicable and especially in patients with ascites. You can, select, you can select regions of interest, indeed in tumors, but also in diffuse liver disease, you may have heterogeneous distribution, so you can select which part of the liver you want to scan or you want to record. And indeed, you can use that, combined with ultrasound, to screen chronic liver disease. And moreover, why not looking at other organ? And liver is one aspect, but spleen is completely related to the splenic vasculature and has, I, I told you before, spleen might be a very good indicator for portal hypertension. We have to work more on that, but I think this is very interesting. So a more general conclusion, I think, incorporation of ultrasound elastography in ultrasound machine has indeed many advantages and allows multi-parametric analysis. And today, as radiologists, we know that we do not rely anymore on one parameter. This is not true anymore. If you look to MR, we have combined the morphologic, the functional parameters, and this is a little bit the same with ultrasound. Published data show that evaluation of liver fibrosis is very reliable and reproducible, and sure, there are other indications, the one that I have described, but many others will, will be developed quite soon. Thank you very much.